Welcome to Canada's podcast. Jerry. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Welcome to Canada's podcast. Um, yeah. Before we go much further, you've yeah. told me, but I think it's intriguing if you can tell people a little bit, bit about yourself and your current entrepreneurial focus, if you like. Okay, thanks for the question, Phil. Um, I won't tell you that it's not complicated, but um, I am currently trying to set up a television property with the help of uh, a few people uh, in the realm of motorcycle racing and the people that race motorcycles. We're trying to capture stories, uh, a well-told story, and a well-told told story should should occur uh, within a uh, the realm that these racers are are living in. So it's a, an introduction, a storytelling, uh, welcome to their world kind of story. But, you know, just going back to our conversation earlier, this isn't necessarily your full-time gig at, at the moment, okay? Um, what's What's been the journey so far? I mean, how have you... You know what? What got you here, basically? You know, yeah. To this point. Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Um, a lot of work, um, like you said, it's not my day job. It is a concept I developed over the course of several years, and I put a lot of energy, a little bit of money into it. Uh, I've been uh, I've been challenged by uh, certain walls that you run into because you're not full time at it. Uh, one of the things I would tell anyone is to make sure you get the help that you need and the time that you need to do this. And when you do run into a wall because you're limited in time, uh, take a step back, uh, understand the problem, see if you can develop solutions that uh, work for you. Uh, everyone's situation is a little different. Um, I have uh, a day job that uh, allows me my evenings to. Uh, to do what I need to do. And sometimes the odd day to do what I need to do, you take your vacation and you, you make it work for you. So a lot of planning uh, when it comes to trying to juggle uh, two different uh, occupations. Okay. Um, but, you know, in terms of that side of it, I mean, what made you get into it? What, what is your area of expertise? Okay. Um, my passion, uh, I've got a few. Um, I consider myself, I've been told, I'm technically creative. Uh, so I love art. I love the science of motorcycle racing. I love the art of motorcycle racing, it's motorsports in, in general. Um, what made me want to produce something, that uh, an event of this scale, this goes back to my childhood. Um, I don't know if you, when you were in grade school, if you ever had had to do school plays and your teacher would uh, uh, pick parts for who would have to do what, I put up my hand for lights and curtain control. I like the background uh, technical aspects of setting up an event. Uh, and that's what led me to create uh, the motorsports events I was talking to you about earlier. Um, well before motorcycle wars, uh, I was running um, arrive and drive programs. I don't know if you're familiar with the Woodbine Racetrack uh, in, Tor in Otoico. Yeah. Yeah. So I used to rent that parking lot on Saturdays and Sundays and teach people how to drive Formula 2000 race cars. And that was a fun thing, but it was definitely uh, an organizational ins insurance was involved. So it was a safety organizational thing. Uh, and that helped me. I ran about 50 events and that helped me understand what it took to run a safe, uh, tight little um, motorsport event. So my passion lies in uh, producing events, um, things that are larger scale than what I would do alone. Uh, I love working with people. That's a that's a critical step in all of this. I couldn't do any of this alone, of course. Um, and uh, you've got to you got to 
really understand the way people work and, and get their help and make sure you, you never you cannot BS anybody. Uh, you'll be picked up pretty quick. Um, you, you've yeah. been at this for a few years now. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you get that so from, from an idea to a business? I mean, well, um, you, you find anything that you can in the event that you're preparing. Uh, first off, I should say that motorsports lends itself to brands, brand partners, sponsorships. Mm -hmm. So in designing the event, you have to include how will this work? How do you create value for a sponsor? Someone who wants to become your uh, brand partner. How do you do that? You got to hire professionals or at least talk to as many professionals as you can. I was telling you earlier, this isn't super funded at this point, mm -hmm. uh, or the growth part of it, right? I had to uh, really pinch my pennies. And I recently found some really cool people to work with who are helping with the idea of uh, polishing up how I uh, create that value for the brand partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if I don't find brand partners, I can't continue with this passion of mine. Mm -hmm. so it's critical. Okay. So, you know, in, in, in the years you've been at it, being saying about brand partners, what would you say is the biggest challenge so far, let's say, that you've overcome? Okay. That's a great question. Um, the time that it takes to describe what you're doing, you got to be really clean, articulate, uh, uh, as accurate as possible, and you've got to reach people. And there's the limit of not being able to do this 100% uh, of my day time. Uh, you've got to meet people. You've got to go belly to belly, uh, as I like to say. Um, you've got to certainly polish your offering. You got to make sure it's to industry standards, uh, and you, you do that by talking to as many uh, industry standard people you can. And then when you're ready to make the offer, you you got to go and talk to as many people as you can. Uh, if you reach a hundred, you might be lucky and get five, and five is all you need. Um, but you got to bring value to the the uh, to the brand partner. You got to work with them. You got to listen and. Uh, find the right people to work with. Um, you can't, this isn't for everybody, right? I mean, uh, it's, it's about relationships and uh, you need time to develop that trust in that relationship aspect of things. Well, you, you know, you've been building it. I mean, we have lots of entrepreneurs that listen, view the show. Um, some of them just starting on their journey. What advice would you give to those folks who are, you know, the thinking about you know taking an idea, wanting to start a business. You know, what advice would you would you give to them? You're uh, still in the process, after all. So yeah, yeah, I'm still in it. Um, tenacity. Uh, you got to really believe what you're doing is the right thing. Uh, and in order to believe it, you got to be careful not to become delusional in your own thoughts. So you do self checks and you do industry checks. You talk to a lot of people. What do you think of this, right? And I've I've done that many times. The whole uh, motorcycle wars property is developed by at least, and I'm just bringing these. I could name them. I won't just now, but I could tell you at least five people that had a major role in guiding it into what it is today. So you got to listen to people, meet people. You can't uh, excuse the language, piss anyone off. Mm -hmm. you, you've got to be nice to everybody um, and you got to stay in touch with them as oft, as often as you can. Um, you got to build the trust. What's the greatest challenge you've faced so far? I mean, uh, you, you know, it sounds like it's been, you know, a journey. Uh, yes. Know, uh, yeah. a so struggle, struggling journey. Right. And, and honestly, Phil, you've got to love the journey. If you don't love this journey, the problems and the challenges, and you, you overcome them, right? If you can't overcome something, take a step back. It could be a few weeks. It could be a few years that you step back. 
But if it's still alive and it's worth it, you, it'll come back to the forefront. Um, could you repeat your question? I'm sorry, Phil. Well, that was good. No, you gave me, you gave me, me gave me your answer. Okay. Um, you know, I always ask this question about mentorship. Um, yeah. And and you know what you've learned from others that you kind of apply to your current situation that you kind of carry around and you know have in your hip pocket basically what, you got anything like that there's a there's a few things i uh, i met a a great canadian producer who helped me along the way and uh when it comes to storytelling uh, you got to be authentic you got to be honest um and you you besides the the idea of listening to people um you, you've You've just got to be uh, telling the truth. If you stay with the truth, uh, being authentic, being sincere, be yourself, do your self checks. Mm -hmm. um, that that I think that's not only good for the entrepreneur or for the person in business, but it's it's good for uh, capturing stories. Interesting. What do you think today is your biggest challenge? Hmm. Um, well, we're at the last phase of uh, pitching the show, um, and uh, I think I've overcome the the last biggest phase or biggest challenge. Sorry, uh, and that was to reach out to as many brand partners as we can. In other words, I I've, I'm working with some really brilliant people and they're going to be literally getting on the phones and, and helping me uh, make contact and go belly to belly with these people. So I think I've overcome my, my last major challenge. But with that in mind, you know, what's the opportunity for you in the next five years? Oh, wow. Um, like I said, I, I feel like I've, I've uh, uh, gone away from the, my last biggest challenge by working with these few people that are going to uh, go belly to belly. Uh, the, the next thing is to produce the events. And once the events are produced, um, the editing starts and we get to tell the story again in uh, edit form. Um, and. Uh, we're, we're hoping that, that the shelf life of the event as well as the television property gets picked up. That's the bottom line. And I, I understand that motorcycle racing is, is the smallest in Canada. Uh, North America is, is pretty good for motorcycle racing, but I see international sales uh, happening in Europe and Australia for sure. That's the direction we want to go. How, how do you keep? You said tenacity. Yeah. How do you how do you manage to stay at it? You know, you when you you know, I'm, I'm just curious because you know this is obviously a vision that you had. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How do how do you keep that going? I'm I'm married to a wonderful person who completely that always helps. I know. Oh that. yeah. yeah that, that always and, helps. Yeah, and uh, it's in my heart. I just keep going and. Uh, I, I keep my eyes open for when there's a wall and I've got enough people to question, you know, is that a real wall? Can we jump this wall? Right. And uh, yeah. yeah. So it's in your heart, passion, you go right. And uh, until you can't. So. so we'll just have some fun ones. Are you a morning or a night person? Ha, both. I love waking up early and I stay up late. Oh, wow. Yeah. And often get that answer. That's really interesting. You said, yeah. You know, that's really interesting. Yeah. If you weren't doing what you were doing now, what would you be doing instead? Oh, that's a that's a great question. Um well, uh we didn't get onto the idea of what I do during the day, but I wouldn't be doing that. I would be doing television production or something in the something in the arts. Uh I went to Ryerson uh, Polytechnical uh, University. Yeah. And uh, I was in the material science corridors, the science corridors. Yeah. I would walk by the radio and television arts 
And I would look at that section of Ryerson and say, well, that's not for me, just because I didn't like being in front of the camera. But little did I know, the real me is behind the camera, right? Maybe I would have been a camera operator. I would have been a damn good one, too. <laughs> yeah, I love editing. Mm-hmm. Editing was a lot of fun. I didn't know anything about editing. And Final Cut Pro comes out, and wow, it's, uh, it's intuitive enough to, 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 to use it. So, I, so you're, you're still, in a, let's call it, an emerging entrepreneur. Yes. But you've been doing emerging for the last six, say, let's say five or six years. Yeah. What's the best thing about that? <laughs> um, well, what's I, the, maybe it's maybe it's like not best at the moment. The anticipation. I've got the end game in mind. I have a set goal. I have such a vision. I can see where I want to be. And it's just so much fun trying to get to that spot without getting hurt. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, if you had to pick one word to describe yourself, and it can't be tenacious. All right. What, what would it be, and why? Um, passionate. Can I use that word? Because that good word. Yeah. I. Um, I. Uh, passion. It, it's just coursing through my veins for accomplishing. Uh, a goal that's bigger than me, right? Having working with people is something I love to do. And uh, that's actually a lot of fun when you can nail relationships. Uh, th- that's very fulfilling. And to accomplish a goal like this, uh, you need people. And if you get people that stick around for the, the long haul, and I have a few. Uh, that that's a wonderful thing. So you keep the end game in mind, and when you're when you're when you're walking along this passionate trail, um, uh, don't forget who helped you. Uh, they'll be right beside you, uh, and keep the goal in mind. Keep the end game in mind. You really need that. Okay. What's keeping you up at night these days? <laughs> um. Well, um, making sure I remember what puzzle pieces I have to put where to make this thing work. So I'm, I'm think, I think a lot. I draft a lot of notes. Uh, nothing really. I, I sleep pretty well. It doesn't keep okay. me up. I just I think a lot. Right? Okay. Okay. Just, yeah. Interesting idea. How can people get, I mean, uh, you know, and it's a, it is a passion. I, I can see that it's a passion in you. You know, how can people get a hold of you if they see that and they go, I like that. I think we need to find out more about it. How can people get a hold of you? Well, uh, they can certainly call me. Um, I don't know exactly what you want, but MotorcycleWars.tv is the, the website. Okay. My- my contact information is there. Okay. Yeah, that's that's really it because it's amazing. People watch, and it, it's. I know that after the fact, there's a lot, quite a lot of uh, conversation. That's why we always ask that question. Ah, uh, okay, okay. You know, it's, cool. uh, it's it's uh, it's 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 an interesting thing. I think we're going to follow you, guy, and see where you see where you go and see what's happening. Okay, so uh, sure. Uh, so I think Jerry, thanks, thanks for coming on. I think it's been really, really good. Um, I, I like the passion. I like that the, the, you're hanging in. I think uh, you know you, you are an entrepreneur. So let's uh, let's get it, get it, get it there. I, uh, I agree, one hundred percent. Thanks for coming on the Canvas Podcast. That's great. Thank you very much, Philip.